We're back here on the platform this evening, and uh, we are speaking with Delano Monroe, and um, uh, my good friend uh, Bianca Nygaard brings along some of the best guests, as I said at the top of the program. So we today are learning a whole lot about uh, the Youth Empowerment Program. Uh, we need um, some young people in your youth empowerment program that goes a little higher than the age that you quoted. You know? yes, <laughs> uh, we have a whole lot of at-risk young men, so uh, we probably need to expand the program to uh, get some 20-something year olds in, in, in the program. Those are the kind of people who are giving us uh, um, some issues in the criminal justice system. Uh, but I, 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 I sense that you are trying to get young people in this program at a very early uh, age so that you can uh, bring a, a level of discipline, as we said. You, you're bending the tree, eh? While it's young, yes, sir. Mm -hmm. You know, as ironic you mentioned, the criminal justice system, you know, I served on the juvenile panel for five years. And one of the things that inspired me so much to work with this program and this grouping of young people is the fact that, you know, if you capture these young people at an early age, at the age that we're working with them, the ninth grade, at age 13, you can bend that tree and you can ensure that at the end of the day, your level or the rate of those young people who are going to cause our country problems and going through the court system and going through juvenile court and boys' school and prison um, is much less. I can tell you that statistically, our young people who have come through the program over the past five years, they're no problem to society. These people don't go before the court. Um, they go into a workplace, they are fully gained, they gain full employment, or they go off to school. So mm -hmm. these are the type of things. So it'll be a wonderful idea if we can span that reach to go up to the age 25 at some point in the same concept that we are working with this program. What kind of support are you getting uh, generally um, in, in the community? I know that there are some people who have come to your assistance. Um, uh, Bianca Nygaard and her father um, doing a whole lot of things at Nygaard Key. But uh, generally speaking, what kind of support do you get for the Youth Emp Empowerment Program? Well, you know, um, we are also grateful for corporate sponsors that partner with the Youth Empowerment Program, in particular, you know, of J.S. Johnson, who's been with us from day one mm -hmm. for the past five years. You know, they stepped in every year and they give us an annual stipend to help with the operations of the program. Uh, the Government Ministry of Education, uh, we get an annual yearly grant from the Ministry of Education to run with the program. Um, and they endorse the program in their school, so they ensure that we have full access to use the facilities and so forth. So for the past five years, they've partnered with us. Ministry of Social Services has done a wonderful job. And recently, the Life Key Foundation came on board, and they've given us a grant specifically to design and uh, distribute a student handbook to every student. So while the students are learning through the process, they can also take notes. They can take that away from them and they can mm -hmm. refer back to that in the future and be like, okay, when I was in YEP, they told us this is how to write a resume. This is how you go about getting references or this is what they taught us about this particular subject. So we are grateful for those sponsors for ensuring that our young people are well equipped. Very good. Uh, and um, you, you work with the churches as well. Oh, most definitely. Uh, St. Barnabas in particular, I have to name them out for the past five years they've partnered with us. Um, we use their church hall as a meeting facility. Um, you know, a lot of churches, you know, they will say to you that, you know, whatever you want, uh, come let us know and so forth. But when you go, it's a different talk. But, you know, um, the priest and director at that church, you know, they've been tremendous support to YAP. Every Tuesday night, there's a meeting down there at St. Barnabas, and whatever they can do, they get their parishioners involved with the program, and um, we, we get that type of support. At the beginning, the Anglican Diocese has also been a tremendous support of the program and opening up the doors to some of the church communities uh, for us. So we've done pretty well in that regards. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, um, speaking with, with young people, and not so young people, um, I, I get the sense that there uh, is a disconnect between, say, my generation and uh, the uh, generation uh, coming up. People are who are in their teens right now. Uh, what I subscribe to, really, they don't. Yes. Um, and the value system that we all grew up, that I grew up under, uh, that um, somehow or the other they are not uh, using that same value system. You find that to be true? Yes, we found that to be the case. And um, what we do is um, a lot of our volunteers, you'll find that they're young, 
in terms of young persons who can relate to what is happening in this generation of young people. So on an average, our volunteers will be under the age of 40 years old who are volunteering with our program. Mm -hmm. So we have a challenge when it comes to uh, that gap of information, but we're doing our best in terms of making sure that um, we get it right. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you have young kids. Um, uh, and yes, I do. I mean, I just find it's interesting that you say that. Um, I find that it's been beneficial for me to, um, to try to learn the, the kids' lingo and yeah. stay up with the kids' dances. And they definitely listen to the kids' music before I allow them to to just be alone with their music, let's say, or something like that. Like, get involved in the kids. Mm -hmm. And then I also show them my world and I show them my dad's world or whatever I was brought up with you know I always appreciated that my dad did that with me like for me growing up doing the running man and the Roger Rabbit and stuff my dad would do it too and that was awesome you know I felt like he was cool mm. and then if he would show me how to camp in the bush and stuff I would love that because that was like his thing and I wanted to learn to make a fire and go in a tent and stuff like that so it's like learning different things you know like for me I really loved um, speaking to Old, like way old, like 80 year olds or something, you know, really finding out what was it like for them in their day and, you know, having my children do that too. So it's like very important that different generations do talk to each other, but that the older people also want to learn about what the young people are doing mm -hmm. and not just be like, no, no, we didn't do it that way, so you don't either. No, sometimes it's really cool what they're doing, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's really cool what they're doing. Yeah, um, you know, she she mentioned uh, some things about her father working with her, and um, one of the I was watching a documentary the other day, and um, it talks about uh, young people just want to be loved. Um, the youth empowerment program, I guess, is emitting a whole lot of love. Eh? Yes. Um, you know, one of the things that we find that, you know, with the young people coming into the program that, you know, they have that aspect of love missing out of their life. You know, mm -hmm. nobody tells them often, you know, that they are, um, that they are uh, loved enough. So mm -hmm. what we do is we try to ensure that they feel that love when they come into our program and our centers. So um, it's something that we put a whole lot of emphasis and focus on uh, to make sure that, you know, that they get that right feeling. Yeah, uh, it takes all, all you need is love. Yes. And, and if you uh, show uh, young people uh, love, um, it is said that uh, half the job is done. Yes. And um, that is what you're doing at My God Key, um, Bianca. Mm, thank you. Showing some love, eh? <laughs> Trying to, yes. In, in these thank various you. Um, sporting events but and uh, everybody needs the treats it. that you're giving <laughs> these young people. Mm -hmm. That that is really it's just it is so rewarding you know everybody needs that like it's just so nice to have a support system behind your back and say say I have you you know like I'll teach you I'll guide you or if you fall down here I'm helping you come up you know and um, my dad had that growing up and was able to make Nigar Key and wants to share Nigar Key with others what he has now you know because he knows what it's like to have nothing too. So I'm happy that um, I'm in a position where I have a dad that created this place where we can invite people yeah, to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, we are going to, at the end of this program, show a clip of uh, some of the activities at My God Key. Uh, and so what we want to do right now, again, we're going to take our final break uh, here on uh, the uh, platform. Let's take this final break and uh, we'll come right back.